All right, so is this the most anticipated debut signature sneaker that we've seen in quite a while? I don't know. Uh, it feels like it. Maybe it's just the marketing. What do you think? I just can't wait to read the comment section on this video about Why? this guy. <laughs> That's all. No, 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 no. <laughs> you don't want it to go in that direction, but I feel like it's going to go in that direction, whether you like it or not. But we're professionals here and you're going to focus on the sneaker because that's what we do. Yeah, because I don't like controversy and caring about people's personal lives. I know, but I went online this morning after seeing the stuff pop up and it's everywhere. <laughs> Yo, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we're taking a detailed look and breakdown on what could be one of Adidas' best basketball shoes that they put out in quite some time, despite the Harden Volume 7 being f***ing awesome. And this, my friends, is the Adidas AE1. But before we deep dive into these things... After these messages, we'll be right back. If you wanted to know our thoughts on the latest sneaker news, well, we've got good news for you, because there's a podcast for that. If you wanted to know Chris's thoughts on the latest nerd there's a podcast for that. If you wanted to listen to Mrs. Wing tell really weird stories and maybe learn something new for the day, there's a podcast for that. You can find the Wear Testers Unlaced podcast, also known as the Pop Culture Podcast, available now on all streaming networks, including right here on our YouTube channel. It uploads every Saturday, so yes, we're making Saturday mornings great again. Now that we're back, we're going to plug the sh** for that podcast until y'all start watching it. So if you guys are sick and tired of that ad, I apologize, but go support the other content that we do and not just the shoes that we review. I'd appreciate it. But anyway, Anyways, this is the box right here. The box I think is really cool. So on one side, you got the size label and the pull hole or whatever, but on the other side is actually where it opens and stuff. And on top of that, you got all of these like slits in here, which I think is dope. You got the signature, which happens to be his logo for right now, along with the Adidas branding. And then on the front, it's kind of Yeezy-ish, where it says Anthony Edwards model number one, established in Georgia 2001, don't follow the wave. So yeah, the outsole is weird dude it reminds me of like everything adidas has done in the past like 10 years all rolled into one sneaker so like the outsole is interesting it's like i don't know how to explain it it's like waved i don't know if that's a tie-in to the don't follow the wave thing or whatever i'm not i'm not sure but uh either way it's very interesting all of these little recessed notches in there feel like they really like help the boost get accentuated underneath your foot because this is a very low to the ground shoe herringbone outsole looks and feels amazing so if you're looking for a good basketball shoe that's not going to break the bank this guy right here feels like it could be one of them like this is this is crazy because i just said that the Harden volume 7 was the best basketball shoe me and alan both agreed jackson did agree as well but uh he actually had a different pick because he didn't get a lot of playing time in the Harden volume 7 due to a broken foot if you haven't checked that out it's in the podcast but uh yeah this stuff right here it feels like they've got like maybe two in a row obviously we don't know what jordan brand or what nike has to offer obviously the gt cut 3 is something that i'm very interested interested in like zoom x if it's not amazing and it's like a dud like how lunar was when it debuted in basketball that's going to be a huge knock on that brand i'm just saying at least from my perspective but anyways these guys right here could possibly be the best basketball shoe of next year who knows and yeah i know that it's really early to say that i get it it's not even january yet <laughs> that feels so weird but they feel so good now what you can see kind of like poking through the sole at least on this particular colorway is the x frame right there that they've got this is their torsional system plus it's a spring plate so you've got to extending into the forefoot areas but not through like the major flex zones it's mostly on the medial and lateral side so it's for stability so you cannot twist this guy up or anything like that but when you flex this way and you release it's just going to propel you or give you that type of feeling while you're on the court which is really cool so it's kind of like a carbon fiber spring plate but instead it's more of a plasticky material i don't know if it's p-bax or not but usually they use something like that now the actual tech like the the cushion tech is really interesting on this particular pair because it's boost and light strike but i don't see the light strike the entire shoe or at least the boost part of it is caged in what feels like rubber or curum curum is something that they use once in a jordan brand shoe i can't even remember the model and uh it's a really cool material that i wish was used more often in basketball and so like when i see it here i'm like ooh, this is cool and uh, it's very lightweight it's supportive and, and i don't know how well it like ages because it is plasticky and plastic you know long term does tend to degrade and crack and crumble but so far they feel good but yeah i'm just wondering like where is the light strike because I don't see it. You can see the boost through the sole, like through the little cutouts. So I'm wondering if maybe the boost is just what you see straight through and maybe the outer rim or whatever might be the light strike. And then all of that is housed inside of this TPU cage. I'm not sure. All I know is that when you put these on, they're 
comfortable and they're low to the ground like it's one of those weird things where it's like dude you sit hella low and they got a little bit of bounce back and the spring plates in there they feel legit and i know that you guys are all are wondering with this shoe did adidas put an actual good insole in there of course not look at this piece of shit, man luckily you can take it out put in any insole that you want now one of the most interesting parts about this material is that you can make it super lightweight without it being like super flimsy you know what i mean like this stuff right here like it holds and on top of that there's holes in it so it's fully breathable throughout the entire up which I think is awesome. Uh, it also makes for a really unique look. Like this kind of looks like a honeycomb. It looks cool. The rest of the upper is pretty basic. It's just like a textile, but it is a thick textile. So it feels like a really hardcore kind of woven. And the shoe itself is, I don't want to say it's gusseted because it's technically not. There is a tongue there and it is fixed with the, the elastic bands on the sides. And then it's a fix at the base, but then the base also kind of like goes up a little bit. So uh, it's not quite gusseted, but it is comfortable, but it is going to be like an interesting, like some people might not like like trying to get their foot in there, but I don't think it's too bad. Although this is a little flimsy up the top, you know what I mean? Like your foot, like will push it down and stuff. So if you're trying to just get an easy entry in there, probably not the shoe, but I don't think it's a big deal. And then the back is really interesting. You got this carbon fiber looking piece. I don't think that it is real carbon fiber. You know, like carbon fiber doesn't normally have that kind of texture to it, um, but it definitely looks like carbon fiber. It is a substantial heel counter, so I love that. And then the insides, you can't really see, but they're nicely sculpted in the collar area or that rear area. So it's supposed to like really hug the back and Achilles of your foot. And then the rest of the shoe is supposed to be one to one. Speaking of which, the sizing. Can Adidas, dude, like what the f like for real. I feel like I should take bets right now as to were they too big? Were they too small? What do you think? What size did you buy? Uh, nine, like I typically do. Okay, are they too big? Just enough. Okay. Like if I was wearing these casually, I'd be cool with that. But these guys right here for performance, like you want a snug one-to-one -one fit, especially with a shoe this streamlined and everything, especially when most of the upper is this rubbery material. So when you do flex, it will bow and pop out weird if it's not one-to-one -one with your foot. So as far as sizing is concerned, I would recommend for most people, especially if you're gonna play in them, go down half a size for a snug one-to-one -one fit, which is interesting because I just got these in, which you'll see later on. These are uh, the same size and they are not, they don't fit the same. Like th this is like one of them shoes where it's like, bro, what the hell is going on over there? And yes, they do come with additional laces, which I absolutely love. They come with these little pink ones, which I think really sets off everything. It ties into the accent colors that are around the shoe. And for whatever reason, it looks good with this cream color or cream sickle color, right? This like orangey look, peach, whatever. So yeah, I dig it. But with all that being said, that pretty much takes care of these guys right here. I do think that they're gonna be a solid on-court shoe. We do have one of our testers testing them right now. So stay tuned for a performance review later on. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We will catch y'all on the next one. So until then, have a good one. You know how people are like scared of shapes and stuff? Like there's phobias. Yes, the one you're thinking of has to do with like circles. So I'm, these might fall into that. Really? Yeah. Okay. So Just... yeah, that's all I'm wondering is like, is uh, some people see this and they think like, oh, it's a pickle. I'm going to run. <laughs> You know that lady that was like scared of pickles? No. No, it was on a talk show one time. I was at home sick. I was a kid and this lady, I think it was on Jerry Springer, but she was like, I, I think, I don't know. Are you sure you didn't have a really high fever? Could have been. But uh, yeah, she was deathly afraid of pickles. It was super weird. <laughs>